This is a good one. Um, your question on this was, how do I get at what's under the brim of his hat? Okay, we're actually going to jump ahead to week five. <laughs> well, but your your question is relevant, so I'm going to preview this a little bit and give you some give you some things to think about. Okay, this is going to require a mask, but it's going to require a special mask, and um, it's one of the features of Curvemeister. So I do want to show it off. Um, Gary, I'd like to ask your permission if if uh, if this goes as according to plan. I'd like to be able to use this as a demonstration video. Um, uh, I'm sure it'll be fine uh, unless I tell you differently. I'll have to just check with him. Okay, there. it's all we're, we're you know we'll not make any fun of him because he's holding an impressive fish that looks to be about 20 pounds. 44 inches. Yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful. Is it? That's a musky, isn't it? Oh, no, that's, that's a, a that northern. Is a northern. There's no spots. Yeah. yeah, No spots and no stripes. Okay, at any rate. Um, it, the picture's in a pretty good place already. You've got decent color, etc. So um, we'll start out by doing some quick checks on it. I'm going to just open up Curvemeister. And we'll just throw down, let's see, that. And we'll go with that. That's pretty close together. And I want to find a spot out here that is going to be black. And I'm not sure, because we're going to start with a little quick color by the number. So I'm going to grab the shoreline. All right, so that's pretty good. It's a little bit cold. I grabbed that uh, oh, point with my pen. Okay. Uh, for, for a neutral, I lose that very top corner piece there. That's a brush to lure them. Right here? Uh, just right up there, yeah. I, it doesn't make any difference. So does well, it. it's a little bit... It needs to be adjusted just a smidge. And that's just me being overly particular. So don't worry that you've gotten it wrong. I just want to... Yeah, that puts everything in a better spot. One more, 55. There we go. So that's, that's about as far as I would take the color of this image. So I'm going to apply that really fast. And then now let's deal with... Um, our mask. We know we're going to need a mask, so the first thing I do here is I'm going to create a new layer. Okay? Because I can't put a mask on this image without a layer. Photoshop won't allow it. So I can even create the layer mask that I need, but it's not filled. I'm going to create the fill in Curvemeister. So we're going to go into Curvemeister. Okay? And we're going to click on the mask icon. Now, what this brings up is it's called the mask cart or the mask palette. Mike can't seem to settle on a name beyond that. But you'll notice that you've got your ten channels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten is a skin channel that Mike has created out of whole cloth, for lack of a better term. The skin channel uses it creates a mask based on the values for skin tones that fall into that 12 to 130 range. Um, as you can see, the mask itself is real um, coarse at this stage. And that's okay, because we're going to go in and actually adjust this. So I'm going to add this mask. Okay? Because the parts that are in the shadow are part of the skin tones. Okay? So in Curvemeister, the first thing I'm going to want to do, though, is I don't want the areas we're dealing with to be black. I want them to be white because I want my change to get through the mask. So the first thing I'm going to do is invert the mask. Now, did you guys see that? Let's Okay, no. let me reset it. I'm going to go in here. I've, I've got it okay. on mine. I'm going to choose the mask channel. It creates a fake channel here. Okay, yep. and I've inverted it by clicking on it. You see how I get the double-headed arrow? I'll wait till you can see the cursor change. I, I don't see what you're clicking on. On the frame of the curve edge down here, between 139 and 116 on the curve frame, my cursor is in that bent arrow. 
Oh, okay, okay, if I click okay. on that and I just drag it, I can in right. This is the normal mask here. This is how it comes out of the out of Curve Meister to begin with. I'm going to flip it over so that oh, okay, I, I got so it, that yeah. the area of shadow here and under his chin is white now instead of black. Okay, so now what I have to do is I have to adjust this mask. How am I doing this backwards, kids? Let me think this through. Uh, hmm. You know what? I'm going to tackle this without a skin mask because I'm looking at this. It's not going to do the job. So this is an important decision point. What I've realized, guys, is looking at this, this skin tone mask is not going to do the job I want it to do. So I'm going to cancel out of Curvemeister and come back in. Okay. Uh, I know this sounds like kind of a rigmarole, but when I look at the image, I'm going to deal with this from a brightness standpoint because the skin tone mask isn't working. So let's grab the L channel as a mask. Okay, so now we have the L channel in lab, and I'm going to turn this over. Okay, and then I'm going to darken this mask a whole bunch to try and isolate just the skin tones that we want to deal with in his face. Now if you look at his face, okay, the shadow under the brim of his hat and the shadow under his chin are well defined here. Okay, so I'm going to click on this copy here, copy the channel, and I'm going to cancel out. Now I go over to Photoshop here and I put my mouse on this layer mask, hold down the Alt key and click one time. It opens the, the mask as a, a window and I paste Control V my mask from Curvemeister in. Okay? So far so good? Yeah. Alright, I'm going to take a real wide brush here and I'm going to block out the vast majority of this image. I'm just going to do it real quick here, real coarse. And then I'm going to go into a smaller brush. And I'm going to take out everything I can that doesn't affect his skin tones. Okay, and I might be a little little bit heavy-handed here. I'm trying not to be. That's my mask. Okay. Yep. Now, if I go into Curve Meister with that mask on the on the layer, I know. I and I go into Lab, I can. Come on, respect me. There we go. <laughs> it is respecting. Are you sure they yep. got it? because here we go so there's there's where we started that's where we've taken it to and the problem with this adjustment in in lab is we desaturate because we've changed the ratio on the pixels so then I can grab the saturation slider and I can bring some color back in but I don't want to go too far because I don't want to blow out the reds here. See how the reds start to dis disintegrate up in here? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to bring this back down just a little bit. Okay. So that brings the shadow in his face back. Does that look unnatural or flat? It does kind of have a weird look to it, so let's see if we can find a compromise. That's a little better. How about that? Yeah, that okay, good. so what we've achieved here is we've opened up that shadow just on his face. We've left yeah. the rest of the image alone, so we're going to apply that, and we're going to flatten this. So I'm just going to use the keystroke Control-Shift-E to flatten the image, and I'll just deselect that. Now, I'm going to go back in here one more time. 
because we have Curvemeister and we're all about color here, right? Just just say right, guys. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'm going to open this up because the specular highlights on the fish don't constitute a true highlight for me. So I open that up a little bit and I'm going to open up the, the three-quarter tones just a bit. Okay? So that brightens the image overall. And the reason you went with the tonality you went with is you liked that nice blue sky. Well, we can have it all. In lab, I can get the blue sky back, and I can still keep detail in the trees and open this image up. Yeah. Okay? So I'm going to apply that, and there's where we ended up. What do you, th what do you think of that correction now, including the face? Well, it makes a big difference, eh? So you get to replay this one. I um, it'll probably be Sunday afternoon or Monday before I can get the video posted. But um, there was a lot in that whole section we just covered, and um, it it really foreshadows week five of the class when we start talking about masks and how to choose them is based on what you want to achieve. Um, for this particular image, my first thought was a skin tone mask. But the reality is the skin tone mask didn't get me what I wanted because the the in order to get these parts of his face, in order to get his the face under the brim and under the chin lightened, the rest of the image was white. And so I would have had to paint out that whole mask except what I painted out anyway and it would have been a lot more difficult process so I chose the lightness channel because there's such a difference between the brightness value under the brim of his hat and the brightness value on his cheeks so I could use that to my advantage to um, help me create the mask alright 